fish markets around the world. People selling and people buying. A complex story lies behind these simple acts. Some 200 million people across the globe are involved in one way or another with fishing and aquaculture. Every year they provide our tables with around 100 million tons of fish. Worldwide, this amounts to 16 kilos per person to eat on average. But in many places where fish is the principal source of animal protein, average consumption is far higher. Few people know that much of the harvest is produced by small-scale fishers and fish farmers, and not just by large industrial operators. And few people know that half the fish supplied to world markets comes from developing countries in Africa, Latin America, Asia and the Pacific. Every day, under a burning sun or pouring rain, Sailing on still waters or struggling against dangerous waves, simple fisherfolk catch fish for their families or to sell at local markets or markets around the world. Fishing is often highly difficult and risky work with unpredictable yields. It's one of the most dangerous of occupations. Storms blow up far from port. Equipment malfunctions. Accidents and injuries occur. Boats sink and crews are lost. Even in normal circumstances, fishing demands high investment of energy and property, but offers uncertain rewards. On this beach in Benin, pulling in a two-mile-long beach seine is heavy work shared by many hands. Yet catches in recent years have been so meager that fishers, after hours of sweat, often go home at night with hardly anything to offer their families for a meal. Here, along the coast of Ghana, catches are also shrinking. The local fishing pirogues, whose numbers were once in closer balance with available fish resources, are now becoming too many. And operating in the same fishing areas are large industrial vessels. They often hunt the same dwindling fish resources that are sought by small-scale pirogues. And they can cause harm in other ways, through discards of unwanted bycatch or through damage to seabed habitats by trawling. The decreased supply of fish is not only hurting fishers, but the entire economy dependent on their activity. Women process fish, and with that income, pay for nets, fuel, and engine and vessel repair. People involved in transporting and trading fish also suffer from a declining commerce. And fewer fish available at the market means that local consumers pay higher prices. In many parts of the world, Inland freshwater fishing is even more important than marine fishing. Millions draw their livelihood and food security from the great lakes and river basins of Africa, Southeast Asia and Latin America. But in these waters also, the problem of too many fishers pursuing too few fish is commonly found. In Ghana, during the early 1980s, Many fishers left their communities and the declining fisheries of the coast and moved north to seek a better livelihood on Lake Volta, created by a dam built in 1964. 
the adverse effects caused by the arrival of many new fishers, who brought with them more sophisticated gear and techniques, remain dramatic to this day. Quadro Abudu is a good and experienced fisher. In 2004, he was rated the best in the region, winning an award for responsible fishing. Yet for all his skill, day by day, he brings home fewer fish. Fewer fish for his wife to cook for their children. Fewer fish to smoke, sell, and earn some cash to pay for family expenses. Much of the international export trade in fish commodities, worth more than $55 billion every year, originates from developing countries. The legitimate but strict quality standards required to trade in many parts of the world pose a significant challenge. This shrimp processing plant is not working as it could because of delays in quality compliance certification. Every delay means lost income lost income for plants investors, and lost income for local fishers who supply the shrimp. In a changing world, the future well-being of fish stocks, once thought so abundant, can no longer be taken for granted. It's necessary to find a new balance between short-term gain and protection of natural resources. A balance between today's catch and tomorrow's need. A balance for sustainability. One way to encourage this is to help people who are dependent on aquatic resources to acquire knowledge and strengthen their capacity to understand and adapt to new circumstances. Aquaculture can play an important role as well, like this small operation in Cambodia, where Soom Sun and his wife raise fingerlings to sell to neighbors who are willing to try a new activity to improve their living standards and to help save the natural resources of the Tonle Sap Lake or like this much larger industrial operation in Chile. But fish farms, if not properly run, can also bring dangers that threaten the aquatic environment. Some operations require enormous quantities of wild fish to be caught just to become the feed for farmed fish. Massive concentrations of farmed fish can bring problems of disease and pollution. Direct involvement of local communities in the protection and management of resources is another way of achieving balance. Smoking fish increases the seller's chance of selling inland far from the coast, but to smoke more fish, more wood is needed. In Ghana, a reforestation project run by FAO's Sustainable Fisheries Livelihood Program helps these women develop a reliable source of firewood for smoking fish. Resolving industrial and small-scale fishing conflicts is also part of seeking balance between immediate gain and the need to protect natural resources. In Guinea, a sustainable fisheries livelihood program pilot project, now part of the country's national plan for fisheries, promotes direct community participation in fisheries surveillance.
l'épervier atterrit dans une heure de temps. Restez tranquille. Constant patrolling of the coast by special government officers is difficult and very expensive. But here, small-scale fishers themselves are the patrolling eyes. While working, they can check for trawlers operating illegally. Once seen, the nearest port can be called to send a launch for interception. Part of the fine the trawler pays will be used to finance the surveillance operation. Demand for fish increases year after year as the world's population continues to grow. Fishing capacity and better equipped fleets have expanded to meet this demand, but at the same time have driven us close to the limits of what we can capture from the wild, while still having enough fish for tomorrow. The dangers of overfishing can be reversed, but this requires all of us to follow a common standard of behavior. Such a standard already exists in the form of the FAO Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries. Adopted unanimously by FAO member countries in 1995, the Code provides guidance on ways to use and conserve fisheries for the benefit of both present and future generations. The code defines the work of the FAO Fisheries Department, which provides technical assistance and advice to countries in order to promote its application. It's an appeal for governments to work individually and together to manage fisheries and to respect ecosystems and biodiversity in national waters, shared waters and on the high seas. We all benefit from the food and livelihoods that the world's fisheries provide. Yet today's catch is becoming scarce in many places. One day perhaps these boys will become fishers. If today we fish responsibly, tomorrow they too can provide fish for us all. <laughs>